Hi, this is Ravindra Karaju, and we are going to look at Alexa with an Azure integration. The idea is to create a skill in Alexa and then uh, integrate it into Azure Data Store and having the business logic in Azure. So when you pass the keywords onto a data store or the business side into Azure, it should be able to seamlessly go into data store or use a business logic in Azure to deliver the results to us. So there are two pieces to it. One, we are going to create the backend and the business pieces and authentication piece in Azure side. And then we are going to create an uh, the skill in the Alexa ecosystem and then try to integrate it. One is with authorization, the other is without authorization. I'll just go for the basic non, but I will show you the basics of what involves in the authorization method. Now, I'm gonna start off uh, with a Visual Studio. Um, you are going to create a file, a new project. You're going to select the .NET Core, the ASP Core, and name what you want. Then we go and say, okay, make sure you select the .NET Core to the web API, because that's what you're going to deploy to. You can choose a school or work account. Um, and then keep, make sure it auto populates that stuff. This is what you will need later on to update in a couple of places. So see if you, the default should be good. You can take and copy it somewhere. Now, if you say, okay, and say, okay, here, it's going to start building the basic shell for you and start to deploy. Mine is already authenticated, but if it's not, it might come and ask you to choose where you want to do it. But right now it's creating the shell for us. Uh, it's going ahead. Uh, this is uh, done, it's deployed. And as you see, the couple of things we'll need to keep in mind is if you look in the app JSON settings, there are certain keys that you will need to make, uh, make sure they look good. This is the key you will need to change the app ID URL, uh, whatever the app ID you had on the earlier screen, you will need to type that in here with, with the complete thing that you configured on the first screen. The other thing you will need to get is the tenant ID. Basically, you can go into the uh, Alexa Azure and then go into the Azure directories, go to property and there's a directory ID in there where you should be able to pull that out and um, update this one. Now, the next, uh, if you go into Azure, there is the Azure directory, you go into, and if you go to Azure Active Directory, pull up what you have, your um, connection, and then look at the properties. Your directory ID is going to be your um, tenant ID. Um, that being said, I'm going to show you where the app ID is. If you go into Azure Directory, uh, pull up what you did. I had earlier done another one, so that's what it is. You go into setting, click properties, and that's your app. Uh, ID URI that you need to update um, in the client in the into here. And that's my client at the app ID URI. And I this is the default that comes and then you need to update with the app URI. And also your tenant ID, um, that's going to be different from what you have. Make sure the domain is what you did when you created the first screen and you give your client authentication very first screen you create a project and you have that's where it is going to be now next what we are going to look at is the main method which is where your the calls are going to come in and your business logic is going to be there uh, it's in a class called values controller the shells are already created by dotnet for you so it does the basic shell for you. You just need to tweak the shells to put it in there, the HTTP post. You will see this authorized method. This, if I have commented this out because I'm not integrating with the complete authentication right now, but if you were to do that, you will have to uncomment that and I'll show you in the Alexa side what you will need to do and where you will need to put information for it to get authorized. Right now I just commented it out, so it'll be a basic connection coming in. It'll allow everybody to connect in. 
I did a post, which is where the initial thing, this is something you will need to take a note of because this is what we are going to use as part of one of the URLs that it will connect to. And when it connects, it will come into here. It will authenticate. I mean, it will connect to this and I it is going to send the keywords into that. I just have a basic Lambda expression to pull out what the keywords I'm sending. And I wrote a pretty, very simple, basic and if data store um, is just an if else condition. Normally this would be for enterprise system. This would be the whole business logic where it can get into a database like SQL Server, Oracle, file system. You want to put it in a big data or any other um, systems that you have where it can run to the business. The business logic can run here connect to the data stores, pull the information relevant to that keyword, and then um, parse and send it back. There are a couple of NuGet packages you will have to know um, to be able to use Alexa's integration that is called Alexa.net. You can search, browse for it, and once it comes up, you ask it to download and it will automatically include in it. Once that's done, you will find all the skill keyword requests and all which you which I am using here to be able to uh, parse and then send it out because Alexa needs in this uh, uh, form, uh, the JSON going back. All this is sending, uh, getting in JSON and sending back in a JSON format for us to look at. The next thing I'm going to uh, talk about a little bit about is about the uh, authentication mechanism. Um, I have just created the shell here. I've not completely integrated it, but just to give you an idea, uh, I will post this. This is available on the uh, sites too, the GitHub. Um, basically what you need to do is Alexa, when it sends the authentication tokens, if it's integrated that way, is going to send in the body, but the, uh, the Azure is expecting in the authorization header. So we need a piece in between to be able to pull that out from the body and put it into the header. So this is that piece of code which does that. Um, you just name it, um, it, the basic context it pulls out, does it. And the other next thing you'll have to do is to intercept the call coming in and then use a call with just before uh, Azure authenticates to pull the token out and put it into the header so that Azure can then go ahead and authenticate it. Now that the basic coding is done, then the next thing is publish the solution into Azure. It's pretty straightforward. You right click on your project, say right click and publish. Mine is already integrated in. If the first time you do it, it is going to ask you where you want to do it. It'll ask you whether you want to do it in a Microsoft Azure and do you want to create a new or if there's an existing one or do you want to do it in ISFTP, IIS, any folder, stuff like that. You just pick, in this case, I picked up Microsoft Azure and this one is already connected. So the good part is once it's published once, you just make the changes, right click and republish it again. And off it goes and updates everything. It's pretty seamless in that sense the connection between uh, Visual Studio and stuff. You don't have to go and manually add or change any of the files or folders. Now that we have talked about the uh, the business logic and the data store on the back end, let's go ahead and talk on the skill that we need to develop on the Alexa side. The way to go about, you'll need to go to developer.amazon.com, create an account over there. And then once you're done and activated, you go into Alexa skill set, get started. Alexa skill kit, and that should take you and then you say start a skill. It'll bring you to this page. You start a skill and then it will ask you to start with this. Now I will go ahead and show you what I've already done. So I don't have to type everything, but this is the skill is what you are going to be teaching it. Um, the name of the skill, which is what the name of the Alexa app will be, what everybody will look at and call it. I call it recipe ingredients. The invocation name, when you talk to Alexa, what are you going to call it as? Talk to Alexa and say, Alexa, open up my recipe and then give me the ingredients for pizza or for that matter, anything. You can pretty much keep this as the defaults for now. Then the next thing you will need to look at carefully is the interaction model. This is where you actually build the keywords and the set of data that is going to go with it. 
there are certain keywords you can look it up at developeramazon.com and they have all the keywords for city zip codes and that stuff you can also do a custom one thing i did wanted to mention is i did a custom one of the things is you are going to integrate this into an external data store right now i just said the name of the the intent and there's this is all json type you're going to come in here call it an item i just said what is the item my list is my own custom list you can pretty much keep this for now and then just if you type and edit you will you can add a slot type so you're telling what my list can contain i'm saying these are what i can contain so i said it could be bread cookie tortilla biryani or sandwich then the next thing you need to do to teach alexa is how are people going to ask it this is can be different parts and combination of a sentence I can say pizza, I can say pizza ingredients, I can say recipe ingredients, pizza ingredients. You will need to think about and um, know all sorts of combinations that we can do. The next is the configuration. If you want to go and save that. Now, ARS Lambda ARN is more for everything you want to do in Amazon. You can use this. We are going to use HTTPS because this is where you're going to connect to an external data store. Remember I talked about uh, uh, URL from my uh, .NET side, I said we will need to keep this piece in mind. So that's where it's now coming down to it. This will be the URL and this is the method that's going to get called. For now, I'm not doing account linking. This is required if you want to authenticate Alexa from one system to another, which is where I was showing the middle layer. If you click yes, there are a bunch of fields you need to fill in. This is available in the Azure side. The client ID is unique and it is only given once when you create an Azure. Um, and these are the redirect URLs. You will be having a little piece on the front end on the Azure side that when the call comes from here, internally it will direct to the methods that you need. Now, I have not done that yet, so I am just doing a basic one. So I can skip all that. And then once you save that, you have to have, you can do either your own certificates, your XO finance certificates that you want to create and upload it if you select that, or you can make it for now subdomain that any wildcard certificate is valid in this case. This is pretty basic and simple for now. And then we will go ahead into the next tab. Um, it is all pretty much click and go kind of thing. Um, so if you keep going, it will <clears throat> come into here where you can then start testing your um, pieces. Now, what I have done, I am going to see if with what I had developed works. Now let's go back in here. Let me see if what this does. So let's say ask ingredients. Now, how will Alexa read it? To Bread ingredients are wheat flour, water. Let's try something else. Biryani ingredients are rice, vegetable, spices. You can either do, and then let's see if it tells me it can teach me pizza. I am not an expert at cooking pizza, but I am learning. We'll let you know in a few days. Well, it's still not perfect, but that all depends on what I gave it, the key names and the business logic that's a back. And I did not code for pizza. That is why it's not finding the keyword pizza in my list that I had and neither has the backend information. You can either people who are familiar with JSON, it is pretty much you take the JSON format, slap it into the JSON text block here request and the response will come back as a JSON string. And that's what get the text is what comes back is the response that's coming back from our .NET code. If I can show you, this is where it is. I said, I'm not expert at cooking. All this is the basic logic that is being sent back into Alexa and Alexa is reading it back to us. Now, having said that, now basically I have 
And I, this is uh, pretty much it for the simple integration. I will go ahead and post the next pieces where I plan to integrate it into a database and then go ahead and also do uh, uh, authentication. Uh, stay tuned for that. The idea is to build uh, maybe a pharmacy app because I work in that domain. So, uh, and see, we can leverage our uh, skill sets for useful in the pharmacy ecosystem. Thanks for watching and then